sports proceedings in business. In business, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers warned plan reduction in petroleum prices may not be realized this week. And later, Ashanti Gold stayed top with 21 points. Diana and Mediama tie on 20, while Asante Kotoko dropped to fourth on 18 points after much the 11 games of the Ghana Premier League. Also, we'll tell you how Kotoko and Diana Star started their game with 10 players each instead of 11. And later, upholding a legacy, Komla Dumont Foundation set to launch two books in his honor. One is Command Dumo in his element, and the other one is the dreamer, Professor Dumo. He's managed to put all these things oh. together. He managed to go through Command's photos, the articles, and Command's writings, and he's managed to put it together. Ahead of the launch tomorrow, some alumni of Joy FM and close friends of the late broadcaster have been eulogizing him six years after his passing on the Super Morning Show. Putting himself out there, looking at the bigger picture and not really considering the consequences on his person. His passion for Ghana, his passion to give the um, voiceless a voice, you know, it's infectious. That's all coming up here on Newsnight, brought to you by Puma Card from Puma Energy, cash-free convenience. Please join me with your thoughts and comments via WhatsApp is 0244-340-437. Success, our passion. <laughs> so how the thing ends? My God! So we video calls, ah, like two minutes. Then now she say we can take over, can meet up. But Charlie, as a hang up, we are Rexy, my data finish. Ooh. See, our rooms, ah, I no get it to buy. So as they come look for another phone. Hey, my guy, hold up, hold up, hold up. You see why you for use Vodafone? I be all be the same data. Who tell you? Now with Vodafone, whether you get data or not, you go free use the Uber app with no data charges at all. Hey, this one. Oh yeah. Now Vodafone the Uber partner. So even if you get data where you de use the Uber app, they not they tell you anything. Where if you no get data safe, Charlie, you de free use the Uber app. Simple. No data matter be a where where they be safe. Be say, eh? As you they use the app, you they get free rides where it come with some champion discount. <laughs> you can now order your Uber ride at no data cost and stand the chance to enjoy free rides and amazing discount. Switch to Vodafone today. The future is exciting. Ready? You're welcome back. This is News Night here on Joy 99.7 FM. We're also live on Facebook and also on all our social media platforms, also on myjoyonline.com. Now, we stay with issues about Galamse. We've been talking about Galamse on Top Story because uh, we are hearing that there's been an arrest of a party chairman and some party members, that's the NPP party members, including MPs um, who are undertaking uh, Galamse. We've been joined on the phone by the leader of Special Monitoring and Eva Evacuation and Investigation of Operations Vanguard, Nanaya Buedu. We are grateful uh, for your time here on Newsnight, sir. So, an update on what exactly the operation today has been about. We understand that there's been some arrests. Give us an update on it, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening to all your listeners. Yes, we went, we went to an operation at Apamayans and Apamayans to do some arrests there. And in the operation, we were able to allocate 20 excavators which 10 was arrested and tracked to the Akramai police station, which we are preparing ourselves to evacuate to Accra Aviation Center. And then along the line, we were able to arrest some members of the people who are doing the Gallup thing, and we have asked the investigation team to do an inventory investigation for us so that we can hand them, and the total left to the appropriate quarters to 
that's working on them. Who are those arrested and how many of them did you arrest? Oh, we arrest five people. Five people. Who are they? Do yeah. we know? Because of the investigation purposes, we would like to hide their names from us. Well, I understand that, but information that we are picking up, are they NPP party members? Are they related, affiliated to MPs? What exactly? Who are they? I, I know you don't want to give us the names, but at least an idea of who they are and who they are affiliated to. Those that we are arrested, some are NDC people, some are NPP people. So NDC and MPP people, five persons yes. you've arrested. How many NDC, how many MPP? Oh, three NDC, two MPP. So it's been established that these persons that you've arrested have political connections or affiliations. Yeah. But you're unable to say who they are. For the purposes of investigation, I would like to hold their names for now. Are they executives of the NDC and the NPP? Mm, they are party members. Pa party members, high-ranking party members, low-ranking party members. Whether a high rank you know, or low rank, and they are all party members. But it's been established that they are NDC and MPP members. So now let's, let's leave that one for the investigation. And we are told that there were some MPs also in there. Is it true? In what we have arrested, or the people that they are doing the asylum service? They arrest, and to those they are no. affiliated to. No. There's no arrest, MP in no. the arrest, but no. they are affiliated to... Um, the activists, they are part of it. Pardon? I didn't hear that, sir. For the activists, they are part of it. But for the arrest, no. But the activities, the MPs are part of it. Yes. But they've not been arrested yet. Not yet. Who are these MPs? Let's leave it to the investigation. Team NPP or NDC MPs? Both. Both? How many? Yes. How many? I can't come out now. There are more than five. I don't know. Are they in the Ashanti region too, these MPs you talk about? I've given it to the investigation to, to work on them. Mm. Now they want to be the person to come out with me. At the appropriate time, the security will mention the name. You don't want to mention their names because uh, the investigations are underway. Do we know how long it would take for these investigations to be concluded? No, it's not going to take a long time because you know this fight is one of the fights that is here to the president's time. So I hope everything that is involved in this will come out very soon. But we'll need help knowing uh, which police are in charge of this so that we can follow up on the investigations. So, for instance, which districts, which constituency, or is it still in the Ashanti region, like you say? No, it, we, are, we did a page in the Eastern region. Eastern region, you mean? Yes. Okay, so these MPs are from the Eastern region? Yes. Okay, but you don't know the district if you won't say the constituency. Hello, and I are Yes, sir. But you are unable to tell us the districts, for instance, right? The district that we went for the operation. E exactly. Oh, it's Aquitia. Aquitia. Yeah. Okay, so that's Aquitia. Able to retrieve 20 excavators, you say? Yeah. Okay, so is this an operation that will continue, or, or that's just it? No, we are continuing. To we other regions? Yeah, we are still working a lot. Very well. Uh, we are grateful uh, for your time here on Newsnight. That's Nanaya Obwedu. He is a leader of the Operation Vanguard team telling us about some arrests that have been made today. Five arrests, NDC, NPP, and there are some MPs They're on the trail for some MPs also from the eastern region. The operation today was in Akwetia. So um, parliamentary correspondents uh, will join us shortly and will narrow in on the MPs 
in the eastern region uh, that we know about. The names that likely are on the radar, those MPs that are engaged in Galamse. That's coming up here on Newsnight. Do stay with us. You want to join us with your thoughts and comments via WhatsApp is 0244-340-437. Now let's move on to some other stories here on Newsnight while Joseph Opokugakbo joins us in studio. Have you been wondering what has become of the Terminal 1 at the Kotoka International Airport following the switch to Terminal 3? Well, today, the Aviation Minister, Kofiada, disclosed to Parliament that Terminal 1 is now being used as a logistical support base for the U.S. military, pursuant to the military cooperation agreement signed between Ghana and the U.S. two years ago. He says the terminal has been rented out to Magdan Aviation, which has signed an agreement with the U.S. military to provide those services. Listen. Now, the government has claimed 104 Tudaku branches as zone pilots at the University of Manchester for 70 mining districts to acquire their own technology in monitoring illegal mining. We apologize uh, for, for that wrong sound. We'll bring you uh, that sound uh, shortly. Uh, what happened in Parliament, what transpired in Parliament earlier uh, today when the Aviation Minister addressed uh, Parliament on that uh, particular uh, situation. But we'll be heading to the phone line shortly and uh, speak to the ranking member on the Roads and Transport uh, Committee, Governs Kwame Agbuja, and he posed that question to the Aviation Minister uh, earlier today. And uh, he has that question as well that will be uh, getting you uh, shortly. But Joseph Obokugapo uh, was in Parliament today. Uh, he will join us uh, with some details on this. So, Joseph, what exactly transpired in Parliament? So, this was a question that had been posed uh, to the uh, Minister for Aviation by uh, the Member of Parliament for Daklu Kwame Akbuja, mm -hmm. requesting specific answers on what exactly has happened to the Terminal uh, 1 ever since the Terminal 3 was actually constructed. And just to give you some details on the specific response that the Minister gave when he responded to this particular question on the floor of Parliament, uh, well, he indicated that uh, the Ghana Airport Company Limited has actually rented out the ground floor of Terminal 1 to Magnan Aviation for use as a logistics operation center for a period of 15 years from January 2019. And he went on to say that pursuant to the Ghana government agreement to the United States, Magdan has also signed a management agreement with the United States military and provides logistics and handling services to the U.S. military through the Terminal 1, into brackets, fixed base operation. So uh, that was the disclosure that the Minister for Aviation actually made and indicated that uh, that is what has become of the Terminal 1. Well, uh, some of the Kujetua Blackwa, who is the minority spokesperson on foreign affairs, expressed concern that as far as he knows, the said military agreement that was actually signed between Ghana and the United States it's something that was supposed to be a government-to-government -government operation. And so he doesn't understand why a private firm, in this case, Magdan Aviation, is being brought in to help deliver on that particular agreement. Even with a little expectation, I expect that Nana Kofado will find space in his... I wouldn't say it has stopped completely. We're having some uh, technical challenges there, which we'll resolve uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, that's what ensued in Parliament today. Uh, there's been a general reaction from some MPs that um, my colleague Joseph Opukugapo has been interacting with on that. But let's uh, speak to the ranking member on the Roads and Transport Committee, Governor Kwame Agboja, who posed that question to the minister uh, where that revelation came up that indeed uh, the Terminal 1 is now being used uh, by uh, Magdan Aviation, uh, it, for logistical support base for the U.S. military, pass you on to the military cooperation agreement signed between Ghana and the U.S. two years ago. Mr. Kwame Agoja, we are grateful for your time here on Newsnight. So you posed that question uh, to the minister. Were you satisfied with the responses that you got from him? Well, uh, good evening, MFI, and good evening to your cherished uh, listeners. Uh, well, there are two uh, issues that I wanted to find out. The first one is to clarify if aware of the details uh, in terms of agreement between McDan and the United States military. And the second one is to understand how the facilities uh, uh, actually been managed. 
uh, I was uh, not satisfied on both ends because the minister couldn't tell conclusively whether he's even submitted the agreement between Magan and the U.S. military. We've had situations where people complain that CCTVs at Terminal 1 sometimes don't work when somebody is supposed to be running terminal, importing arms or whatever it is on behalf of the U.S. military, who checks to find out exactly what Magdan is doing without sounding quite personal. We know that Magdan was the one in the past who, uh, you know, uh, before the 16 election, African mercenaries brought to this country to train a particular party uh, 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 people. It was alleged that some of the people close to Magdan uh, facilitated that. So some people are very concerned that Terminal 1 has been left, that our eyes are not on it, and the activities of Terminal 1 are not uh, exactly the way it should be. I ask, for instance, do we have customs, ACOB, and all other agencies which are at Terminal 3 there? The answer is not very clear. It, he, he actually said that uh, sometimes the CCTV don't work, and I, I think that it's something very important that the nation must be aware of. United States, that particular agreement, that was signed between Ghana government and the United States, as you may be aware, was quite controversial. We thought that having uh, their half here could uh, endanger us. Now, we have a Ghanaian actually providing logistical services. Whatever they are importing, we don't know. And I think Ghanaians must be mm. really concerned about it. Well, well you, I, you, following the excerpts on, in Parliament, I know that you also asked about whether when they bring in these logistical uh, you know, items into the country, does it go through the normal processes that others go through? You asked whether NACOB and the rest of them uh, check these things. What response did you get from the minister? He said to the best of his knowledge, uh, that should be the case. Not like, yes, that is what is happening. But our information is that it is not always the case. In fact, we are... We are do we still have Ms. Abuja on the line? Yes, I, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Uh, we, we lost you shortly. But I would want to find out what your suspicions were, for which reason you sought to quiz the minister on this particular issue. I wanted to, I wanted to be sure that Terminal 1 is not being used for anything that will harm our country. The United States military is not using Terminal 1 to import uh, uh, candies or uh, rice of bags. They are a military. And we believe that, like Honorable Okuje said, we wanted government of Ghana to be fully aware of what uh, Magdan is doing with the U.S. Mili uh, uh, military. And as of now, that information is not there. So it's a serious concern that we needed to follow up and find out exactly the terms of that. And government must be fully con convinced that the, the Terminal 1 is not being used to do anything that will harm the security of our country generally. Now, do you have fears that the terminal, being a private one, is being used in any way that endangers the country's security? Yes, I just told you that there's everything. Uh, and the, the minister confirmed that even sometimes the, the, the CCTV don't work. And we know that because it's not no longer an international terminal per se, we don't have permanent uh, staff of NACOB, uh, uh, national security, immigration station there. So assuming, and the flight. We are also told that some of the flights come as scheduled because they are not like flights uh, carrying individuals that you know, like maybe British Airways or uh, uh, Delta. But they can come at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Who is checking to see exactly what they are bringing? And the fear I have is that the fact that the minister is not able to say categorically that, yes, we know the content of the agreement between McDan and the United States uh, 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 military, it says she was on his time. I'm scared that we don't know what they are doing. That Magdan, I can't trust that Magdan is that, that type of person who will be uh, candid enough with us. Because his, his, his conduct went uh, with uh, regards to the training of uh, bringing in of the uh, South African mercenaries to train MPP, uh, 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 some people prior to 2015 election, doesn't give me confidence that he's capable of uh, uh, self-checking himself. So, finally, though, what's really uh, the concern that you have? Is it that you have an issue with a private person being contracted to help the U.S. government implement the Defense Cooperation Agreement, or what exactly I is it? I am 100% in support of any Ghanaian entrepreneur to, to make a living or to, to uh, venture into uh, private business. But the point I'm trying to make is this, that to the extent that the agreement between Ghana and the United States was a military cooperation agreement, sub-sections of that agreement, if, if the United States want to uh, conduct uh, a, 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 a certain level of business that needed 
the attention or that needed the support of the Ghanaian entrepreneur, I feel government of Ghana must also be sure of exactly what that agreement is. To the extent that government of Ghana is not fully aware of the agreement between the United States military and Baghdad makes me uncomfortable, and that is why Honorable Kujetu Ablakwa asked, would it not have been better if this agreement is done or to, uh, I mean, uh, in fact, proud to the agreement, government of Ghana is fully aware of what they are supposed to be doing because we are a sovereign country. We can't say that the, the uh, Magdan and the United States military are capable of protecting the, 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 the interests of Ghana because Magdan is a, a Ghanaian and the United States uh, have got an agreement, uh, the, the, the overall agreement with the Ghana government. That is not enough. We need a detail. And mm. I, I, I'm still going to uh, encourage the minister to, to tell the country what are the, what's the content of that agreement? Mm. Well, we're grateful uh, for your time. That's the ranking member on the Roads and Transport Committee, Governor Squame Agbuja. Let's stay a while longer in Parliament because uh, the President uh, Kofado uh, will be in the House tomorrow to deliver uh, the State of the Nation address. There are mixed expectations in the House ahead of that. The minority is asking the President to use the opportunity to address. Uh, to apologize to Ghanaians for failing in the fight against Galamse. Listen to NDC MP for Tamale Central and former Lands and Natural Resources Minister Inusa Fuseni. Even with a little expectation, I expect that Nana Kofado will find space in his State of the Nation address to explain to Ghanaians why he failed in the fight against Galamse. He has risen the expectation of Ghanaians so high when he put his presidency on the line and said he was looking to the next generation, not the next election. But the water levels, the stability te levels in the waters, in the pra, in the ofen, are at an, an unacceptable limit. And so he has failed. At least that statement in his state of relation must also include an apology. So that's what I want to hear from an I want apology. to hear from, an apology from the president for raising our expectation of him because he's failed and, 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 and failing subsequently after he raised the expectation and, that's and performing too. disastrously and the consequences of his failure being catastrophic and the issue of the excavators in addressing but that is the close, colossal listen the failure you can't address the failure without talking about the fraudulent breach of trust but some of the people he put in authority when those we paid with taxpayers money to help us deal with galamsey turned around and became galamseyers that fits into a failure and so in addressing the failure and rendering the apology the nakofado will well tell us exactly why those people in whom he invested so much trust then they are backs on him and engage in galaxy but MPP MP for Idubiasi and chairman of parliament environment committee Yafrim Pongado says the president should rather be commended I wouldn't say it has stopped completely I mean anybody who says especially coming from where I come from there, there, there's no way I will conclude that it has stopped completely but it has reduced considerably, considerably. If, 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 if that, those measures were not put in place, I'm sure we didn't have any farmland for cocoa farming, I'm telling you. So the so president has done well in it, dealing it, with the legal money. If, if, That's your position. Yes, if you, if, you look, if you look at it as water in a glass, I wouldn't call it as half empty, but I would call it as half full. It means he has been able to do something very appreciable. And, and if we are able to commit ourselves to those principles, there were, there were a few uh, uh, hiccups, hitches in the implementation process, but those ones can be addressed quickly so that so we that, move forward. So that the minorities claim that he should apologize because he's failed. For you, that's for, out of for, 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 for me, I don't know. They're, they're hallucinating. I mean, uh, that, to, use, to use a mild word. I mean, how can you tell a president? You see, you see, what they should know is that whenever you, 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 you come out with such a statement, you should know that the majority of Ghanaians who voted for the president, who believed in, in, in that dream that he can stop it, although I wouldn't say it is totally stopped, there's no way I would tell anybody to come and to tell the president that the president should come and apologize. For what? At least he's made the effort, and that effort has yielded some results. Because we still have our cocoa farms intact. If the river bodies 
uh, uh, Arcel Brown. And as they said, they, they went to some areas. And for me, if you do this, this thing in, in, in the dry season, where all rivers are dried, and, and the best of, of every river is brown, and you see brown is something, and you say, because of that, uh, or, uh, uh, he's not done anything about uh, the fight against Galamsi. And that one is alluvial basin. People, people who go on the river bodies, they are specialized areas. And so, in some cases, in my area, it was so difficult for the security people to even change them. You see. So we should give credit when it is due. But all in all, I can never ever say anywhere to say that the president has sold. At least I will give him anything above 50%. And then we have to fight so that we get to the 60 and 70%. Then all of us will fight. So that's the NPP MP for Idubiasi and Chairman of Parliament Environment Committee, Yao Frimpong Ado. Now, the controversy rages is the impasse between the Ghana Trade Fair Company and former news editor of the Enquirer newspaper, Raymond Nacha. Today, the Trade Fair Company is strongly denying claims made by uh, Raymond Nacha that the demolition of his company at the site was targeted and politically influenced. Properties belonging to Universal Labels and Packaging Company Limited and Color Planet, owned by Raymond Nacha and other buildings at the Trade Fair Center were destroyed in a demolition exercise by operatives of the National Security on Sunday. Mr. Acha, who spoke to Join News Monday, said the exercise was illegal. Because I built my factory 2010. It was when I was doing the extension and they now realized that they were going to do a redevelopment. Then they started coming with those crosses. And I remember writing to them, I said, I can't come and do a factory here and then I will produce here and go and finish uh, in Latvia, of course. How is that possible? So I told them that that position was wrong. And guess what? They kept collecting rent from this. The same, the same thing that they have a problem with. They kept collecting rent from it. And so this woman came and said, we should leave. If we don't leave, we was not going to renew the rent. And we said, you can't do that. This is a country of laws. That is why we went to court. Well, subsequently, uh, there was a statement uh, from a government uh, speaking on behalf of the trade fair. But today, we have a later statement also from the trade fair company limited. Some MPs on the trades committee have also been touring the site. We'll get to it shortly. But my colleague, uh, Ernest Menu, has been studying all that document and joins us in studio. First off, um, Ernest, you have a court document uh, from Raymond Natchez's side. What, what, what do we know? So essentially, he's trying to prove his case or his claim that the trade fair center or the trade fair company was actually aware of of the court processes they had undertaken and uh, defied those you know orders or decided not to respect them and went ahead to demolish his structure so i have with me here one is mm -hmm. a notice of appeal the other is a motion on notice for interlocutory injunction and that one says i read the applicants have produced proof of service service of the instant application the application was served on counsel for the defendant and that's on the 15th of April, 2019. There's no affidavit in opposition on the docket. Counsel is also not in court to be heard on the matter. Then when you read the notice of appeal, mm -hmm. it says that take note that the plaintiff, and this is a case between all the companies uh, involved in this matter and the trade fair uh, company. It says that the plaintiffs, being dissatisfied with the ruling of the High Court Commercial Division of Crown presided over by Mr. Justice Imano Amo Iate, delivered on the 12th of February 2020, hereby appeals to the Court of Appeal on the grounds out in paragraph 2 and will be hearing of the appeal uh, and seek the relief out in paragraph mm -hmm. uh, 2. Now, so it says that one uh, part of the decision of the lower court complained of the whole ruling. Okay. Number two, ground on appeal. A, the Leonard trial judge failed to exercise his discretion judicially um, when, he set, when he set out or vacated the order of injunction restraining the, def the defendant or the respondent. Point three, which is relief sought from the Court of Appeal A, an order of the Court of Appeal setting aside the order of the High Court restoring okay. the earlier order restraining the defendant. So essentially, Raymond is saying that this was served on the trade fair company. They are aware that they are appealing the matter, mm -hmm. and yet they decided to go ahead 
with the demolition. But the Trade Fair Company Limited also has a statement today, also citing court documents that gives them the authority to do what they so do. So when you go to paragraph 7 of that statement by the Trade Fair Company, it says that on the 29th of April 2019, the tenant secured an injunction to restrain the Ghana Trade Fair Company from evicting them from the site. Mm -hmm. The injunction was, however, vacated by the High Court of uh, by the High Court of Justice Land uh, Land Court 7 on the 12th of February 2020. In passing judgment, Justice Amoyate held as follows, and they've quoted portions of the judgment. It says, if I may ask, as it stands, will it be fair to maintain the injunction order, which has been pending against the defendant, looking at the financial losses the nation is currently facing? Mm -hmm. There's no evidence before me that the salient uh, fact was brought to the attention of the court differently constituted before the grant of the injunction order complained of. It is my considered view that since the plaintiff, uh, the plaintiffs are not seeking for title to the land, but rather compensation, general damages, and an order compelling the applicant to consider them as part of any future development of the Ghana Trade Fair site by the defendant, it will be fair and convenient to vacate the injunction order, which I accordingly vacate for the government to go ahead with the facelift of the Ghana Trade Fair site. And they insist he wasn't targeted at Raymond Archer. Absolutely. Well, the minority have been wading into it. They say that the future NDC government will prosecute the chairman and chief executive of the Ghana Trade Fair Company over the demolitions at the Trade Fair Centre. They were at the Trade Fair site today. That's the, this year from the deputy ranking member on the committee, uh, Yusuf Suleiman. The government is likely to pay for this uh, disruption. And if that happens, what I'm saying is that it won't be as usual where government will just dole out money to pay such debts and allow those who would have supervised this kind of recklessness to go free. That's what we're saying. So then what, what will happen if government ends up losing money through judgment debt because of this and the future NDC administration? So what we are saying is that those who would have supervised this will pay a price for that. Pay a price as in what? Of course they will be prosecuted. The law will take its course because if you are entrusted to do such a work as a CEO, as a board chair, what have you, and you sit and allow government to lose money, definitely you have to pay for that. So that next time, whether it is government A or government B, we'll learn a lesson from that. And what are conversations around compensation for those who have been affected by this destruction? For now, we are not in government. And if government is saying that what they have done is right, the best thing is for them to go to court. And it can travel for several years. What we are assuring them is that when the NDC come to power, we'll let the laws of this state work. We will not abuse the powers that would have been given to us. But for now, is there any action you intend to take in Parliament? Sure. Uh, so tomorrow, for instance, uh, Friday, for instance, we're going to call on the minister, call on speaker to invite the minister to come and update us on this issue. They should come and give us reasons why they destroy, uh, destroy these uh, companies. That's what we will do. And then from there, we'll take it up. That's a deputy ranking member on the committee. That's the Trade and Industry Committee, Yusuf Suleiman, and they're speaking to parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gakpo. Time now for business. When we return, uh, we'll be talking about the man, Komla Dumo, upholding a legacy as we prepare to launch two books in his honor. And any time we hear Komla Dumo, ah, the, my then last encounter. smiles. On my face. The last encounter with him was we did the program at uh, State House where mm -hmm. we were, I think, one of the Ghana Club 100. So, I mean, he was doing part of the MC, also doing another part of the MC. And then we all finished and went to the car park. We, we had our chat, we were going home to mm -hmm. go and sleep. Are we ended sure? up meeting somewhere <laughs> again in the night at the same night. And so, come on, you're going to sleep. I said, you're going to sleep. And we were cracking jokes. And we left there at morning just parting with each other well, only for us to hear I was not privileged enough to have to work with him yeah. but I I wrote letters yeah, I from JSS I was in JSS I wrote him letters and he read them on radio mm -hmm. and wow that's my joy mm -hmm. story I should say yeah. and the rest is history and, and today somebody shared a testimony on radio about the fact that Komla would mix with from the high end people to the Mm -hmm. Low, and That's I remember well. when I did something at BBC, and he was there on duty that day. And listen, the guy had time for me. We can and go on and, and on. He went <laughs> would, would never and tell him the Kumla story. Yeah, of course, I have mm -hmm. loads and loads of Kumla stories. But 
We'll talk about it as we prepare uh, to launch the two books. But what's in business, George? Well, let me know. We were expecting that prices of petroleum products were supposed to go down this week, but the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers is saying that maybe that might not happen. The Ghana Stock Exchange to begin processes for the introduction of municipal bonds from next year. I'll be giving you more details on that one. The business news on Newsnight is brought to you by MTN Business. Welcome to the new world of business, kingdom books and stationery. Your number one stop shop for all your office essential. First National Bank, we are the bank that understands your business. First National Bank, how can we help you? And it has been 25 years of joy providing compelling content to those who are in the business community. Mr. Barr has big dreams for his business, Barr & Co. Limited, and his family, making them a reality man to long drives and queues. He's lost precious time struggling to pay his suppliers in China, Turkey, India, and other parts of the world. With the first national bank global payment via our online banking enterprise, he now pays for all that in the convenience of his home or office, giving him time to focus on family and growing his business. Use our online banking enterprise to access Forex when you need it. It takes a bank that does more to help your family. So who's helping yours? First National Bank. How can we help you? What kind of phone is this? Hey, Joe, it's the coloring to Ah, chance not for you. Go be upgrade it. Just on a dial it. Star 120, star 1 hash. Now back to empty and resume level trouble. Hey, Dimu. A free and yet popping. A free boost me in a year. Would you have a use with empty and number? No. Do more. Now wait me a winnie. One of the 20,000 iPro Amber 5S phones. Cafe door. But come up. Test it. Now for Tama Monica. I've been now. I said, we'll be to you. Return. So we'll suck on with iPro Amber 5S phone. Empty and ready will have a problem. New year, new phone, new return. We are good together. We're there for you. Everywhere you go. We give you nothing but the best. We stay above the rest. More quality, more affordability. Kingdom Bush Sensationary. Everybody's going to the one and only shop. With customer satisfaction, it's a guarantee. Kingdom Bush. Yes, with our 30 days credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery services, and our free consultation on setting up your office, Kingdom Books and Stationery is on mass in our delivery of quality and affordable office essentials, equipment, and furniture. Experience world-class customer service in all our branches in Accra, Sema, Kumasi, Cape Coast, and Takwadi. Call us on 0302-764-101 or visit our website at www.kingdomgh.com. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all of its essentials Kingdom and stationery. Terms and conditions apply. We know it's important to create a productive and supportive working environment by investing in your employees' health. With a leading international track record, Apex Health Insurance is regulated and licensed by the National Health Insurance Authority to provide medical insurance services to institutional clients, families, and individuals. Apex Student Package and International Medical Solutions are all here to cushion you. Visit Apex Health Insurance Office at Zion House, Boundary Road, Shiashi, or call 0501 683914 or 0232 0015 in Kumasi. We are located opposite Premper College, Sofoline, and in Takradi, Apex Health, your preferred health insurer. To be successful, you need to have an eye to sport opportunities and a plan to harness them. Amazing products like Wakanao Pay Small Small. Yes, Pay Small Small allows you to lock down great travel deals with a down payment of only 25%, leaving you with cash to meet other pressing needs. You have the liberty to pay the balance in up to three convenient installments. Be smart. Use Pay Small Small. Visit wakanao.com.gh to get started. Wakanao. Let's go. Joy 99.7 FM. You welcome back to Business on News Night. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers is warning that the expected reduction in petroleum prices would not be realized. Poor prices should have gone up by some 2% from Monday, but the various oil marketing firms are yet to adjust their prices at the pumps. 
chief executive of the chamber, Duncan Amwa, says the current input cost of these firms as well as taxes on these products may make it difficult for the review to happen. The NPA reinforcing the price stabilization and re, I mean recovery levy, the PSRL. What that means is that some 14, 16 pesos that was taking off is now being reinforced. And so whatever gains the city stability would have uh, given you and I is actually getting wiped out by the reintroduction of the PSRL. We have said that the way prices are set in Ghana, it continuously works against the consumer. Unless something is done about the whole price build-up, it will be difficult for Ghanaians to have the sort of relief they need to get when world market dynamics are favorable, when the city is also stable, and uh, when taxes are also stable. Unfortunately, every one of these indicators, when you find world market prices go down, then government sneaks in more taxes. When the city is stable, government, I mean, reintroduces taxes that they are taking off. When the city now depreciates, they add. When world market prices go up, they add. I mean, when taxes go up, they add. So these things cannot continue and we get it. President of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amor. Let's still stay on the sector because the Deputy Energy Minister, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, has revealed that the newly introduced petroleum product market scheme would affect pricing at the pumps in the future. The National Petroleum Authority today launched the second phase of the marking scheme aimed at measuring the quality of petroleum products on the market. Dr. Amin says the initiative implies that fuel prices could be going up in the future. We need to do more to achieve greater sales volumes. Because when we do that, we all win. Consumers pay for quality, OMCs make profits, and government will increase tax revenue. Fuel market is not free, we know that. And it has impact on petroleum product prices. We will not have been paying for it, but for the bad ones amongst us. So all of our citizens of Ghana must be vigilant and continue to expose those bad ones. I am happy that the Seaboard has advised operators, players in the industry, to expose your colleagues. We have to lead by example. Deputy Energy Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam. The Ghana Stock Exchange has begun engagement with commodities trading firms that is produced buying companies to get it listed back on the Ghana Stock Exchange. PBC was suspended from trading on the Ghana Stock Exchange last year after some rules of trading were violated. Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Fezzi, in an interaction with Joy Business, disclosed that they are working to actually help this company come back onto the market. PBC will show me back. Um, we're even meeting the executives either uh, Friday or Monday. Uh, they're just restructuring and they'll be back. That is why we have not delisted them. Um, they're just on suspension and, and they'll surely be back. In a related development, the market will also, by the end of this year, begin moves to actually get local assemblies to raise funds in the market by issuing municipal bonds. Now, this is part of moves to reduce the burden on government budget. Managing Director of the AC in Jacquafezi disclosed this to Joy Business after a presentation on the performance of the market for last year. All that we are saying is that it should be interesting and I think it will be one of the things that we will do to try and get our municipal authorities to issue bonds. But we need to explore further to find out whether there are any legal imp um, uh, impediments in the way. Don't forget, do they keep books properly? Do they have enough big balance sheet to support insurance of bonds, etc.? So we need to do a lot more research work. Ekofezi is the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange. So if you have interest in MTN, well, the value of your share was up by a peso today. So now it is worth 67 pesos. For SGS General, it lost two pesos to reach 73 pesos. And that's all for Business on News Night. 25 years of joy providing you all those compelling business content for you and also linking those SMEs to the regulators of their sectors or respective sectors. And that's all for Business on News Night. Thank you very much, George. Let's do some of your comments. Um, you've sent in via WhatsApp is 0244-340-437. This one says it's obvious the answer has been provided by the spokesperson for the task force and unreliable simple answer to a question of the political party affiliation of those arrested could take him that deep thinking. If we are serious about this Galamse fight, then I suggest politicians are taking off from the forefront. The media coalition should rather lead the charge. Government officials are complicit in the act and we cannot trust them. This one from uh, Kujo Sakodi says, 
because I don't understand why uh, the government is wasting time on this Galamse issue. He has the power to stop it once and for all, but because of politics, look what uh, is happening, and we are still polluting the environment and the water bodies. May God have mercy on us. This one from Kofi Mensah in Osu. He says, these politicians think we are not wise. If you set targets and over time you do not achieve, you have failed. The way to go would be to tell us you have achieved so much to do and we can appreciate. And Yao Intema says, what has party coloration got to do with the crime of Galamse? And Yao has issues with why I am asking about the party coloration of those who have been arrested uh, by the Operation Vanguard team. Some of your messages, but let's um, do our Rival Life campaign now here on Newsnight. When 22-year-old Crystal Nelson spoke to her mother on the phone four weeks ago, little did she know that she was going to, it was going to be their last conversation. The level 300 student did not get to say why she called because her mother promised to call her back when she got to her destination in Accra. It turned out she never made it. 51-year-old Doris Nelson died in a car crash. Five minutes after that phone call and was buried over the weekend. Maxwell Agbagwa was there. Here's his report for our Rival Life campaign today. A woman wailing very close to the remains of the deceased Doris Nelson. She lies in state. It is an atmosphere of grief and sorrow. It was a normal day on January 12, 2020. Doris Nelson was traveling with her husband Nelson back to Accra for Pando after a visit. It has been hours of church service at Ashama branch of the Global Evangelical Church. Doris Nelson is now making her final journey to the La Cemetery. The daughter of the deceased, Crystal Nelson, has been narrating how she heard the news. I was in school when my auntie broke the news to me. I, I couldn't believe it because I spoke to my mom on that Sunday and she told me she was in a vehicle coming home. So when she gets home, she will call me. So I, I couldn't believe it. I know my mom. She survives every single thing. She, she can get sick to... To the last moment, you think she's dying, but she'll still survive. So telling me my mom is dead, I was so surprised. What, what kind of accident? Like, how did it go? Five minutes. It was just five minutes. And that day was my cousin's birthday. So she rather spoke to my cousin. The only thing she told me was that she's in a car going to a car. So she'll call me back when she gets home. And that was all. I didn't talk to her. So I gave the phone to my cousin to speak to her because it was on his birthday. Head pastor of the Global Evangelical Church, Reverend Della Donko says Doris Nelson played a pivotal role in the church. He says churches have a role to play in minimizing accident on Ghana's roads. And we being church personalities, we need to also take this campaign seriously because as we are losing the accidents by our campaign, that a lot will cease. For instance, our drivers who drive carelessly, some of them are drunk. Some of them, in other words, also overspeed because they just want to get there on time. The church has a role to play to help people understand what it means not to drink. According to eyewitnesses, the driver was attempting to dodge an object on the road. In the process, the vehicle somersaulted many times. The deceased, who was not in a seat belt and sitting close to the window, was forced out of the vehicle. Her husband only survived because, according to him, he held onto another seat in front of him. That's our Arrival Life campaign. Definitely, you need to wear your seat belts because if there is a crash and you are not in seat belt, you definitely fly out of the vehicle and you may hit your head on a stone and you would you'd die. Join the campaign with the hashtag Arrival Life. Do you wear your seat belt? Babe? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Every time. The first thing and I you do don't when peach, I do you? oh of course you know you you've you know, been in guys, my car guys, you've been in like my car several cheating. times I have been where in which car <laughs> 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 this guy <laughs> I haven't been uh, in your car yet <laughs> maybe I'm yet to sit in your car definitely right. strapped myself but but you know you know arrive alive very very important then, you all have to ensure our safety and you have to be in your and you don't there. drink so mm -hmm. don't drink and drive so don't text whilst driving. I don't do that okay, at all. it's good. That's mm -hmm. good. What's in sports? Well, a bizarre incident happened during the Indiana Stars and Asante Kotoko game this afternoon at the Doma Park. First, 
Kotoko arrived less than 40 minutes to the start of the match. Then, despite not receiving any red cards, both teams decided to start the game with their 11th and final player sitting on the touchlines. Now, Idiana, uh, their player Farouk Adams and Asante Kotoko's Martin Entry were captured by TV cameras sitting on the touchline as the first half progressed. Well, with all the drama, Idiana left it very late through a Samoa Bio goal uh, to clinch all three points. Now, Kotoko uh, coach Maxwell Kunidu talked about the game but failed to comment on the 10 players used for the first half. Uh, generally speaking, it was a good game. I think we played far, far better than the host. And uh, at the end of it all, uh, they are laughing, you know, but uh, that is football. For this game, I'm not worried at all because the boys really played into instructions. What we told them to do, they do it. They did it very well. I must be honest. The boys, they did their best. That boy came out of nothing. It didn't be expected at all. No, I mean, you know, the time was up and it was just out of nothing that the goal came. That is why I'm saying that the boys have done exactly what I told them to do. I'm proud of them. Now, before you go there, just tell me this. Uh, what was the decision uh, to have begun the game with 10 men apiece? Uh, can I can't explain that. So, as I'm talking about coach, Marcel Kennedy, could you explain why they played with 10 players mm -hmm. as well as the Diana Stars played with 10 players, Charlie? The things that, you know, normally you get uh, to hear and watching our Ghana Premier League. Interesting development. Very, very yeah. interesting. Definitely, we'll follow this and bring you more in our subscribe oh, sports bulletin. bringing back the love. Of course, we are bringing mm. back the love. No two ways about that. Now, aside the Adriana Kotoko game, 11 won this, uh, drew 1-1 one, one with Wafa Intala is a bit... Uh, Intala is in their game against uh, Mediama ended 2-1 in favour of Mediama with Adebayo scoring again. So now he's taking his goal tally to 11 goals. Karela United drew goal as well as Kwara to focus. Omina Sharks beat Ebusan Dolls by a goal to nil. And Shanti Gold also won their game against Dreams FC by a goal to nil. Tonight is the UEFA Champions mm -hmm. League continuation of the round of 16. Yesterday, Liverpool lost by a goal to nil to former sub parties Atletico Madrid. Also, Borussia Dortmund, uh, they beat Paris Saint-Germain by two goals to one. So tonight, uh, in our featured game on Joy UCL, we have Spurs up against Leipzig. And mm -hmm. then the other game, Germany, of course, uh, yeah. Uh, Leipzig? No, I'll go for Spurs. Spurs. Yeah, okay. I'll definitely go for Spurs. We'll see how I and also out. have our Atalanta. Commentary. Yeah, there'll be live commentary. George and Gary will be here. Of course. Uh, as early seven, the build up uh, begins and commentary comes away at exactly eight. Thank you very much, Benedict, for joining that live commentary. Now, lawyers for NDC National Chairman Samuel Fusampo for today moved two applications, each seeking to halt his trial. Just as Samuel Asiedu said, they did not raise any serious issues of fact or law requiring that the court halt proceedings. Joseph Akable was in court. Here's his report. Lead counsel for Mr. Ampofo, Tony Lita, had urged the court to reject the statement, saying it was not authored by the witness. Trial judge Justice Samuel Siedu dismissed the objection and admitted the statement, saying the statement was signed by the witness, thereby making it valid. Mr. Lita today orally urged the court to halt its trial due to his pending application at the Court of Appeal. Chief State Attorney Siama Sampon opposed the application, saying nothing bars the court legally from proceeding. He also stated that the statement had been in evidence since the state filed all documents it intends to use prior to the start of the trial. He insisted Mr. Ampofu waived his right to appeal when he failed to object to the statement during case management conference. Justice Samuel Siedu dismissed the application to stay proceedings, explaining it will unnecessarily delay the trial. The lawyers then made an application saying they are entitled to seven days to appeal the court's decision. Justice Siedu dismissed the request saying the seven-day rule applied to civil cases. The state prosecutors, however, considered for an adjournment after the second ruling. This was after a defense lawyer, Dr. Bamba, had described the decision by the judge as novel. He asked for an adjournment, adding that availability of the judgment will inform their next line of action. The case has been adjourned to February 27. Now, it's been six years since his passing, but his memory continues to inspire many Ghanaians and Africans, including me. The late Komla Afeke Dumo, who worked with Joy FM and later the BBC, was an iconic figure who represented the continent and projected the positive African story. In a matter of hours, the Komla Dumo Foundation, set up to uphold his legacy, will be launching two books in his honor, Komla Dumo and His Elements, and Komla Dumo, the dreamer. The two books capture the learnings, writings, and experiences of the former Super Morning Show host and will be sold to raise funds to support the foundation. Ahead of that, some alumni and close friends of the late broadcast have been eulogizing him. Listen to Ken Ashigbe, Matilda Santi Siedu, and Charles Mensah. 
his passion for Africa, his passion for the black man, passion to give the voiceless a voice. So it's infectious, his ability to hold leaders to account. And the interesting thing about him also was not that fluent in ever, but he would give you words that I will learn. I remember learning Zado Kelly from him. You know, you know what Zado Kelly means? Tell me. It means eclipse, you know, and this is me. <laughs> This is me who say a thoroughbred of a boy, you know, but I will argue and say, okay, so what's that locally? And the way you say it, you know. <laughs> Typically, after every show, we would do a review. Mm-hmm. So you would do an interview. When there's a commercial break, he comes into the newsroom and says, how did it go? What did you think of that? Did I ask the right questions? I think that was something he did very well. And even when there's criticism of how the show went, usually we'll just listen take it in and like Marina said he takes what is the constructive one that can help improve the show for the next day which I thought was very very extraordinary especially because given his stature and who he was he was like the biggest person as far mm-hmm. as on their personalities were concerned mm-hmm. in our organization and yet he could sit back and take feedback sometimes from even interns but he also was very humorous in spite of what seemed like a really charged challenging circumstances you'll find a way to create some joke and laughter about it and that always, your teens. exactly <laughs> <laughs> and that always brought us all back because sometimes it can be intense it has a moment that he reflects a lot but one of the things that we did most unbeknownst to people weekends when there's nothing we drive to the hospitals Kolibu. we're buying stoves we're visiting buying food stuff for people for him it wasn't about announcing that he's donating it was about the people who he had helped now listen to charles benza he's a close friend of the late broadcaster he's been giving some details on tomorrow's launch one is Commander Mo in his element, and the other one is the dreamer. Basically, the family, especially Professor Dumo, he's managed to put all these things oh. together. Photos, the articles, and Commander's writings. And he's managed to put it together with the publisher. We have a lovely two books where it will inspire. You will see the beginnings, his low moment. Most people don't know, but Commander used to be in medical school for yeah. four years before he left to do the psychology and politics, and he ended up in Harvard and all those. So that journey. Um, it was not always smooth. These are books you definitely have to read. And that's Charles Mensa, a close friend of Komla Dumo. They all spoke on the Super Morning Show. And just before we go, we've been sharing our joy stories. What's yours? Australian High Commissioner Tagana Andrew Bans has been sharing his joy story as he congratulates a multimedia group on 25 years of broadcasting excellence. Congratulations to Joy News because you are always out there amongst the people getting good stories on the ground and your wide coverage of all the different things going on in Ghana is is commendable. I particularly remember you covering the Ghana Grand bike ride that I did with the British High Commissioner Ian Walker and uh, you guys being along for all of that and uh, your your close coverage of of that exciting event that helped uh, Ian and I to get out and meet some of the, the real local people around Ghana. So congratulations to Joy News for your on the ground presence always and your uh, keenness, willingness to get out and, and cover stories about ordinary things and people around. The Australian High Commissioner, Mr. Vance, the Mayor, ending uh, tonight's edition of Newsnight with me, MFR Poe. Of course, we're all waiting uh, for the UEFA Champions League round of 16, Leipzig versus Spurs and Gary Al Smith. And George Adu Jr. will be doing us the honors as always. And you can't miss your commentary. What should we expect tonight? Yeah, um, should be a good game. Mm-hmm. And we'll have a pre match show as usual. So uh, we'll have the pre match Champions League podcast right after this batch of commercials. How do you then, guys do it? Like, it's, it's so amazing, like, listening to you guys' commentary. How, and how, how do you how do, you do, do it tonight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is different. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I mean I suppose if mm-hmm. if somebody asks me how do they do news I'll say this is different as well. <laughs> so I, I guess you, we, you learn yeah, you yeah. learn you practice and all that. So we'll be doing the pre match show for Spurs versus Leipzig and then we'll have Atalanta versus Valencia also on the update. So yeah, that's about we it for glued. the plan from we now till ten PM. Take it away, guy. Mm.